morning, everyone. Morning. Uh, I'm Helen. And I'm Sue. Have you seen, been to our uh, sessions before? Yes. This meeting? Yes. Okay. Uh, so this one is uh, different because uh, we wanted to have to work in smaller groups to be able to discuss more individual exercise questions that you might have uh, and to go over the home exercise programs both for PM and DM and for IBM uh, so you could try the exercises and discuss how should you think about loading and progressing and, and all that stuff. So that's why we wanted, so we have altogether five of these sessions. Uh, so this is the third one, and I think we're kind of learning as we, as we go along. Um, so you're very welcome with asking <coughs> any question you might have about exercise. Or, if and you if have... you don't ask, it'll be a very quiet session and it'll yeah. last yeah. about three seconds. So, Because <laughs> <laughs> it's less about us telling you what to do. Yeah. It's more about you asking us questions that are really relevant for you. So if there's an area of your body that you find particularly weak that you would like some ideas on how to exercise, then we can do that. If it's how to start with exercise, then we can you know, address that. You know, so I guess be brave, ask questions, because invariably you have asked a question that somebody else was be thinking about as well. So it really is an opportunity to sort of prick our, pick our brains. So, so please do. Do you want us to start there, or do you want to uh, do more first? I think we're just going to... I just want to ask, how many in here have IBM? Okay, thank you, great. So, and you three have... PM. 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 DM. And they all sat together. Yeah, there was there is two sessions for PMDM only, and then there's two sessions for IBM only, and then there is this one, the mixed one. <laughs> and we have to have Joe here Hello. as a volunteer to go around, help you with the exercises, and I think you're you can yeah, answer, a, so you can answer a lot of questions, questions. too. Because I actually do the three hours of exercise a daily, so. Uh, so the programs that we're having like a base uh, that we're going to show pictures of and that we're going to try is uh, from the home exercise program that are, will be up on the website for this year's meeting. Uh, and there's one specifically for uh, inclusion body myositis. Uh, <clears throat> it's kind of an ordinary home exercise program, but the special thing is that you do it twice a day for 16 weeks. So I think it might be the frequency that is important, that you do it shorter times, it, that maybe 15 minutes, but <coughs> twice a day. Um, so we're gonna go, so what I was thinking, we gather everyone with IBM together to look at this exercise program. And then we're gonna look at the home exercise program that was developed specifically for poly and dermatomyositis. And we started it, you know, 20 years ago, thinking it might be dangerous to exercise. That was the main uh, notion, uh, which turned out not to be true. As you know, it was, all research had been done on marathon runners, and they, you know, marathon run is a really extensive <laughs> exercise, and we don't ask you to do that. Um, but they could see that the CK levels rise sky high and they have inflammation in their muscle. So from that, they kind of gathered, well, if you already have that in myositis, you shouldn't exercise. But now we have seen in, in more than one study that exercise can have an anti-inflammatory effect. Mm -hmm. And you can repair some of the damage that this, the disease and probably the corticosteroid treatment have done to the muscle. Um, <clears throat> And so we, after Karolinska, now we're using it as a program to get started with right after you got your diagnosis. But then it's safe to go, uh, to progress and do other things, but just like a starting program. And I think it's good if you've never exercised before also, 
So how many of you are exercising now? OK, great. So what are you doing? Um, I do at least an hour of cardio, <coughs> walking, or mm -hmm. a treadmill every day. I do weights, free weights usually, um, maybe three times a week. I do Pilates and yoga each okay. three times a week. <coughs> Um, sometimes more with the Pilates or the yoga, and mm -hmm. those have been really helpful, so. Great. And when, after an uh, exercise session, do you feel really tired, or? Oh, it's wonderful. Yeah? It, 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 it really is good. I mean, I, without my, especially the walking, and when I, most of the DM impacted my upper body strength, mm -hmm. but I could keep walking, so mm -hmm. I didn't impact my legs, and as my strength came, back, my upper body mm -hmm. strength that came back, then I could start adding more stuff. And mm -hmm. I had worked with a PT and OT early on, and that okay. helped in terms of strength. But every day, I mean, that's, I, and I've always been really athletic. So mm -hmm. to lose my ability was very scary. And mm -hmm. to start feeling better again physically has been wonderful, and exercise has been a big part of that. Great. Anyone else who wants, what are you doing? I do uh, yoga huh? and, um, you know, I'm still trying to lead an active life. Well, I have IBM mm -hmm. and um, the yoga, um, in, there's a couple of different routines I do, but um, I like the Kundalini style. It helps stretch my lower back out a lot and keep flexibility. Um, the uh, other style also helps me get up off the floor still, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to retain that function. So it'll, I'll go into a plank position, then a downward facing dog to get up. And uh, so far, can still do that. Great. So I'm just trying to <laughs> maintain function as long as possible. Has anyone tried the home exercise programs? Have you? What, what is your experience? Um, it was, I didn't stay with it, um, and it, it didn't seem to help. It, it was almost counterproductive. I felt weaker afterwards. Um, so I, maybe I was doing the wrong exercises. That's why I'm here. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, so I have a few copies, copies of the exercise program, so I weren't allowed to make many copies, but I think you can... You can share. Mm -hmm. So on the front side, I have just written a little bit about the exercise program. And you see there are two. Um, yeah, we have the two uh, references for this, when this, the studies that develop this program. So it's a small study from uh, Australia, um, <clears throat> and it was seven people with IBM in this study, and they, some used a cane, uh, some were ambulant without a cane, but it's kind of a mix that had a disease from four to 17 years, I believe. Uh, so they started this program, and what is special with this one is that they could see improvements in the finger flexors uh, that you know are really effective with IBM and also in the quadriceps. But they also saw improvements in other muscle groups. Uh, and I think it, there are two benefits with exercise. And one is you can definitely improve strength in the other muscle groups that are less affected. For example, the hip muscles on the outside of your hip and the back side of your thigh. And it's important to have strength in, in the shoulder muscles. But it's mainly these, you know, in the, in the underarm that gets affected. And you can, so you'll see probably with exercise the biggest effect in the other muscle groups. But there is also a chance to improve strength in the most affected muscle groups as well. And so we, have picked, we picked up on this program at the Karolinska and we've prescribed it for five years, just about. And I'm pretty certain that there are 
different forms of IBM. It's not one diagnosis. Uh, because you're all different, right? And with different disease progress. And I have a few patients who have really had major improvements from this. And they have, you know, after 16 weeks, they've gone off to do gym training, aquatic training, and like yo, long walks, and yeah. And I think the majority has a more moderate improvement with small improvements, but still to keep them active and they can see that I can do this. It's not a big change, but still, I can see I'm not, I'm not getting worse. And then there are a few people who have this, like your experience with this. And I think in that case, it's very important that maybe you shouldn't do the whole program. Maybe you should adapt the exercises to do, to go in on an even lower level and try to build on. So we can discuss, we can discuss that. Uh, and on the front page, you see there is a scale from 0 to 10. I know it's a small text. <laughs> Are you able to see it? I'm not without my glasses. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's a scale I want you to use in terms of, of to decide how many repetitions and what load are you going to have, what resistance. So for example, if you would do 10 stand-ups like this, and you would say, oh, that was a one, which is very, very light exertion. That is too easy. It won't give you, it won't challenge your muscles to the extent that will make them stronger. But on the other hand, if you would say, oh, it's a moderate to go in with, to begin with, that I would say that would be good. But if you say, oh, it was a seven, <laughs> then I would say it's too much to start with. But then when you have, when you have grown accustomed to the program and you know it's working for you, then it's no problem to say, well, this is a six and a seven after an exercise session. Uh, so I'm... I'm just going to refer to this scale if you ask me how many should I do? <laughs> because I haven't, I haven't seen your muscle strength score and because it's really helpful if you can see a physical therapist and have your strength measured and then find a good uh, starting point and then build up and then have your strength measured again. And if you're not able to see PT, maybe you need to find another one like, say if you could, for example, if, you, if I could take away a chair from you and you could still stand up, like you have your own measures. So that would mean that you have gotten stronger. So anything in your daily life that I want to be able to do this, and then you train to get that goal, to get there, and then you kind of, hopefully you can take it off and say, oh, I, I improved, I can do this now. I couldn't do it before. Do you have anything to add, Joe, about goal setting? <laughs> the key is to uh, find a movement that you enjoy doing and to commit on doing it, so find the right the exercise that, that fits the, the function you're trying to improve and focus on improving it little by little, but the key is little by little by little. Don't overdo it or you're gonna end, your, end, end up being exhausted where you can't do anything for the next day or two days. So stay within your, your strength, but uh, what helped me the most was uh, I teamed up with a phys physical therapist to start my session and we did 85 sessions in six months, two hour sessions that started really slow, but we ended up making it a lifestyle and we, we focused on function. We didn't focus on uh, what normal people focus on. When I did my rehab with a physical therapist, we had to, I actually went on the video, I actually went on the internet with them and we, we looked at your, your program 
and we looked at the TMA site and we discussed what is it we want out of physical therapy. And I said, well, you can't repair the damage of the muscles that are gone, but I want to be able to step up uh, on a step on a curb again. I want to be able to grip something without dropping it. I want to be able to get out of a chair without using my hands or get off the ground without crawling to find something. So he developed, we did about 20, 25 plus stretches in these two hour periods, but they were uh, incremented to safety first and uh, working on my core and my balance. And then we worked on the grip and then we worked on, but we did it every, three times a week. We did it where it became an everyday uh, lifestyle. And when the MDA and the My Status Advisory Board Elena said IBM needs to do three hours of exercise uh, a day. Well, it has helped me. I mean, I've got most of my mobility back. I've got my grip is a lot better. Uh, so the program really, really works. But you've got to commit to it, and you've got to make it a lifestyle. And once it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes easier to do. And, uh, and I named, renamed some of your exercises, Elena as a function. This exercise is get out of so chair. Yes, this exercise is stand on a step. This exercise is going up the stairs. So when I thought of your exercise, I thought of, I'm doing this one because this one helps me go up the stairs. So it, 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 that's, I had to adapt it to help me. And that is so true. You get good at what you're doing. So if you have difficulties getting out of the chair, you need to do it more often because you will improving that function or you know working on your balance or so you all have to set your own goals what what difficulties do I have and what do I what do I want to be able to do and that's what Thank I learned you. most was people keep asking me how do you get it, learn to get out of the chair well your program was this well that's what I had to do the most to get out of the chair it, it, I, that was the one exercise that helped me the most getting up to going up a curb your, your step exercise this that's what helped me go up the up the stairs so I named this go up the stairs you know the program really works yeah, one side a lot weaker than the other side. Wow, and you're still able to get out of the chair. Right. So, but <laughs> it's by practicing her program, making it a lifestyle, where it's an everyday thing. It's not once this week and then once next week. Yeah. It's got to be an everyday thing, lifestyle. Yeah. I know I let life get in the way because, um, you know, you'll have like a super busy day, you're trying yeah. to get things done, and then it takes a couple days to recover from that, and even an exercise you are able to do a couple days ago is like extremely difficult to do after that, so I just, I'm just starting to notice that, that I really have to commit, and not only commit to the exercise, but commit mm -hmm. to not overdoing anything. Yeah. Um, you know, because if I push myself and plow through whatever yeah. activity, uh, I pay a huge price for a yeah. few days. Well, I, I spread mine out your program. I, I'll do this while watching TV. Or I'll do some of her programs while I'm watching TV or, or sitting and resting. It's not, a, it just and depends what my energy level is at the time. And I would say if you're having a busy day, it's better doing one exercise that day than not do it at all. So, so this is a program going through most of the targeted muscles in IBM. But maybe you have to figure out what is the most important thing for me. Say it's getting out of a chair, increasing your quad strength. So maybe you should focus on that and start with that with two exercises and then kind of build on. And I would say it's not, it's not dangerous to overdo it from time to time. Okay, you will have pain and you will have fatigue the day after or two days after, but it won't harm your, it's not harmful. So. It seems like the, da the danger, which I've experienced, is if you really overdo it, then you fall. Oh, yeah, that could be a... Mm -hmm. Then that's the biggest problem. Yeah. And yeah, that's you injure a, something, like, mm -hmm. I, you know, injured my arm, not recently, but, mm -hmm. you know, then getting out of the chair, is like impossible. Mm. Um, anyway. Mm.
Okay, so should we start? So if we turn to page one, so I think we can go through each exercise together with such a small group. Uh, so the first one is getting out of a chair. And the, yeah, so, and the picture says you should hold your arms like this, but you can, doesn't matter how you get up, just get up. Oh, perfect. Good. For the wide stride, this is the only way I can use the chair. Maybe you should have two chairs as well. So, whatever works. Got you. So the thing is, when you get out of the chair, your muscles are shortening, right? And when you sit down, my muscles are lengthening because they need to resist gravity. And your muscles are about 40% stronger when they're lengthening than they are while they're shortening. So I want you to try something. Try to sit down really slowly. It's like it's something on the chair that you want, don't want to crush. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Maybe you should have two chairs too. So find, have a chair at home that is high enough so that you're able to do this. You do, was it easier to go down slowly than getting up? Yeah. That's because your muscles are stronger that way. So get up any way you can and go down slowly. You know, I want to get you another chair. No, I have cushions. I took them off just to put them okay. on. Great. My legs are not that effective. Yeah. It's my pants. Excellent. <laughs> and what you could do is have your kitchen table in front of you so that you will always have something to hang on to. So imagine you have your table in front of you and you go. I can see in some ways my mind is better than it's Excellent. Yeah. So do you get any tiredness in your thighs by doing this? How was it if you look at this scale from zero to ten, was it easy or was it hard? Do you get tired in your muscles? So what would you say? Which num how many how many okay. But how many did you do? Two. So was it no exertion or was it moderate or was it strong exertion? Strong. Okay. So then I would say do one in the beginning. Do one. And then next week you say I'll, next week I'll do two. And the week after I'll do three. But do it daily. And what do you think? How many? No, okay. So you would need, uh, maybe this is not the exercise that you need to focus on. You need to focus more on your hands. What do you think? At least a four. A four. And how many did you do? Two. Two. So maybe one is, one or two is good. I think you need to do it before, before lunch or twice a day, and you can kind of decide whenever you want to do it. Just have some resting time in between. Excellent. So we're going to look at the next one. There you go. So now we're going to need some rubber bands. Thank you. So the So who is rather strong in the hands? Do we have anyone who is stronger? <laughs> you can try this one. <laughs> so the yellow one is the, the yellow one is the easiest. So now we're going to work with the, your wrist muscles. And 
and I want you to rest your arms on your thighs. Just one. Yeah, one, one at a time, I think, so you have, because you need to have control over, you have to be conscious of what you're doing. And I want you to try and do like this. So keep your arm, don't, don't bend the elbow, just the wrist. Oh, perfect. But you're working these muscles. Yeah, I can definitely you feel that? that? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what grip you have, just as long as you can work with your wrist. So I think now you've done 10. So what do you think? How exciting is this? What? Moderate. Moderate. Yeah. Okay. So we say start with 10. Okay, so then you can try the other one. And if you have a free weight or a weight cuff at home, you can use that. I just brought a lot of rubber bands because they're, I could bring them from Sweden without having to pay over weight. You get up to 50 pounds real quick. It would be expensive. Yeah, and you can do both. Just be sure that you're not doing them too quickly. So 10 slow is much more effective than 20 quick ones. So for the first time, I will say stop when you're saying it's a three on this scale. Hmm? Oh, you can do that as well. Actually, it, it's, I've been thinking a lot about this. Why is it that you still, this grip remains, right, for a long time, but you lose? Because the thumb is less effective. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know why. This one doctor told me that the muscles that do those two different things are right next to each other. No. It's kind of, a, to me, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a race that went after the ones you need the most, you know, almost. Yeah. So, I want you to try and stand up. Perfect. Oh, you made that look too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so you can hold on to your chair or something. I want you to try and do heel lifts. And don't do more and more repetitions than stop when you feel that this is a moderate. It isn't strong, but it isn't light either. And it's a very good idea to hold on to a wall or a steady chair. That's 12, so you would like to stop there? Mm -hmm. Great. And it doesn't matter if you just can lift tiny, tiny bits, you will be able to lift higher. And try and see that you don't have too much support from the chair. So you're going to do most of the work with the calf muscles. <coughs> Very good. And one point that I want to make is, so we did something for the legs, and then we did something for the hands, and then we did another thing for the legs. So that you don't do all the leg exercises back to back. And you don't do the, all the arm and hand exercises back to back. So now you will be, so from when we did the stand up from sitting, our, your thigh muscles were resting for a while while you did this. And then you're resting your wrist muscles when you did this. You see, so you think, think about it like a circle, like a circle training. 
Okay, great. Just holler if you have any questions. Sir. I think you could sit down again. <clears throat> so now we're going to work with the biceps. You want to have this one? And again, you can have a free weight or a weight cuff. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. So, step on the band. And what is important here, I don't want you to be able to sit like this with your wrist. Then you have the band too tight. I want you to be able to, to hold it in this neutral position, and then you go up like this. Is it too? It's, it's too hard. No, this, that's the even harder one. You, I will give you another one later, so you can. I know I can't. I can't even hardly lift it up without anything. Or maybe you can fill a little water bottle with the amount of water yeah. that is yeah, that you can this, lift. Even this. Yeah. I so mean, just do it against gravity. Okay. I would say just against gravity. So how many can you do before you say it's a moderate exertion? Ten. Where do you get most tired, here or here? There. Can you touch your shoulder doing it? No, you don't have to. Depends on what you would say on the scale from zero to ten. Okay, so I would say you, maybe you need an orange, you need an orange rubber band instead. And it much easier on my left. Oh. Maybe you're strong. Are you left or right-handed? I'm right-handed, but yeah. my left is much stronger. Yeah. Yeah, my, my right leg is stronger than my left leg. Left leg is weaker than my right leg, and my uh, right hand is weaker than my left hand. Oh. So it's, it's weird. I've never heard that one. No, me neither. Usually it, usually it presents with one side is weaker than the other. Probably 80% yeah. of the people that have it. Yeah. Which makes getting up off the floor out of a chair that much more difficult because one side is so much weaker. It's difficult to compensate for one side being so much weaker. Right? So. <coughs> okay. So the next exercise you can do standing up or sitting. I can show you standing, leaning against the wall, and do lift up your toes. But if you're not able to stand up and do that, you can sit. Yeah. So I would have you sitting, and maybe you can put a weight cuff on your feet. So these are two alternatives in the program. Exactly like that. It doesn't matter, you can lift them a little bit, it's fine. Yeah. And I think one stretching exercise, is, exercise that is not in this program is that is important is stretching your. Half muscles, so you, it's very common that you get stiffness in the ankle. So, due to stiffness, you're not able to to lift. Is that something you have experienced? 
I do a thousand of those a week. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. And you could all do it brilliantly. So what you do is I actually do exercise work. I point my toes in and do them. Point them out and do them. And then I do one leg at a time. Yeah. You just need to make sure that you're every different thing I can think of I do. So that would work. You, I mean, you have two calf muscles. So I guess if you do this one, you would put more strain on the right. on the so lateral it one, and this if you would be your toes pointed in. Yeah. yeah. And your toes pointed. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So you, you got to be creative. <laughs> That's really. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, so the next one is like a rowing. So what you, with a band, you can have put the band again under your foot, and then just go. So this is much for your back. It's important to have good core stability, and try to tuck your tummy in a little bit. Do you want the, the yellow one? So pull your elbows back. Try to really <laughs> opposite of this. Straighten up, really good. So how many of these can you do? Until you say it's moderate. It's easy. Try this one. So except for your hands, this exercise is more for the back. But if you're gripping the band, you will... Yeah. your fingers. Yeah. And I learned yesterday there is something called the, the TheraBand Academy. Go in there and they are supposed to have all kinds of exercises for all kinds of muscle groups. <laughs> yeah. What's that called? The TheraBand Academy. <laughs> Take it out. I will do for inspiration, you know trying to find you exercises <laughs> that are good. Um, okay, so now we're down to the last page. So you can sit or stand, depending on what. Either you can sit like this and go up. So this will work your shoulder muscles. Or you can stand up. Whatever. Yeah. It's very important that you that you tighten your tummy. Uh, here. So you see, you might have to use different bands for different muscle groups, depending on where you're strong and where you're, where you're weaker. And try to. Do not go like that. So these are the things that I was sort of saying about. Really good. You know, because actually all of you are too good for this start-up program. So you might want to progress on these types of things. What if you do it without a resistance? Can you get it? Oh, yeah. But give you a variety of different types of exercises throughout your body that you can then add into your program. I still think you should be People have trouble lifting their hands over their arms over their yeah. shoulders. Mm -hmm. What you can do is maybe if you hold hold on to a stick and then you go up with both both of your arms. So both arms are helping each other go up. An umbrella or well maybe not your case. I don't know if your case is good. Yeah, good as he so on this one, you yeah. keep the leg in position. So for you, yes, because you, you, the bridges are too easy for you. 
and uh, did that make it? Is it a heavier line? So the other one it's pretty light. Yeah, it is. So that one is too easy. It's just the active. The next one yeah. over is the next one. Yeah. So, so like where you're trying to draw from is through the shoulder, or? Uh, I don't know where I'm trying to draw from, to be honest. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but whatever it's not. But it's not exposed. Doing. It's from down here somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What if you lean back towards the chair? Keep it locked straight down into it. And slowly down. Oh, okay. There you go. So now you've got the other one. I'm back. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a dictionary of stretching. It shows all the stretches. So you can, as you go on through the process, you can learn new stretches to keep it going. And a lot of stretching books are focused on a function and, and work on what you need the most to work on. Yeah, I would just love to just go up in a chair without, like you get up from a chair, holy cow. I haven't been able to do that in ages. Did you um, progress to that or did you net, so you were doing hand assist? I was doing hand assist. Okay. But you can get up off the floor too. Uh, I still have to lean and find something or I keep a cane with me to get off the floor with. When I bring a cane with me, it's not to walk with, it's been to get off the floor with, depending on what I'm doing. So I have to have something to lean on. And then get off and it's hardly, it's almost effortless. But without that little table, it's the hardest thing I can do to get off the floor. So there are dough that you can train your hands with. Someone said you can buy them at Walmart. Training dough. And they come in dif different colors with different resistance. So you can try and work with this and you can try and take it out like this and wrap it around your hands and try to separate or just go. Is it meant to be used without the bag? Yeah. Just because I have, I have only three. <laughs> so there's been a lot of people squeezing this for the meeting. <laughs> but no plastic bag. So you want to try and pass it on? And on the website there is a hand exercise program as well. There is, a, there is an easier... Okay, are you stiff in your fingers? Mm. I think it's, it's important that you, that you work with your mobility in the fingers. So otherwise they will... Mm. Yeah, so, so, mm. yeah. so work with these and so that you can bend them, at least passively. And you know the fingers easily go into hyperextension. Do you recognize that? So let's see, there is uh, this one. And then make the knee nice and straight, and then lift the leg up. Tell me if I'm. Oh. Try this one. That would be perfect for you. So that ring will stop your finger from going into hyperextension. So it will be easier to try to bend your fingers if they're not stretched like this. And these are called ring splints. Ring splints. Maybe I should have a, a link on the on the website. I think that is a lady ring. <laughs> you, can, you can try it if you have slim fingers. On the other. Uh, I have, I have girls' fingers. <laughs> Okay, so your ring finger was a bit hyperextended. Now you can't go into that position. And yeah, so the idea is that it would be easier to bend your fingers with this. You have a little better position. Mm. Oh, you have a really good, good grip. This one is getting I would recommend you to have a softball or a dough to kind of work with your fingers and, and remain the mobility of the fingers. So even if you can't bend them actively, try to help with the other hand so that they don't get so you. So you remain full full range of motion in your fingers. Okay. Well, you took your fingers off. So it's solely on my big toe. I'm walking mask. 
Mm. Uh, I don't understand the concept. <laughs> but um, I guess it's supposed to keep the finger from going yes. back. Yeah. yeah. But I'd like to have something that would keep the finger like that. I know. That. I know. So, because I used to play violin, and I thought, well, if I could get something to just hold the finger in that position, you know what? then I could move that around as a, as a chunk. But, <laughs> I but, got this one. I don't know if you somehow could. It's done. I got rid of my violin anyway. I've decided to get rid of everything I can't do. So rather than have it just sitting there facing me. But yeah, my, my thought was if I could get these things permanently like that, then I could move them around yeah, and still have a chunk and put pressure a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's, it's very oh, small. Okay, but that, that's the right. <laughs> yeah. There are, you can buy them in silver and in gold, but then you have the plastic. <laughs> I think they were, uh, originally they were developed for pe people with RA, arthritis. <coughs> No, I would say if you get to have more weights on your quads, I would say do some exercises for your uh, for the hamstrings and have a good one. Or are you? If you go down, go down on the floor. Can you get up again? So you can lay. You can lay down in your bed. Uh, see if I can. So if I go, can you see what I'm doing? So. You going to bed? No, I need more. So you do it all positions. So imagine that you have a higher cushion, and then you go and lift up like this. Or I will lay down on the. My, that's for my the back of my my seat seat muscles and the back of my. So I can do. So you go up like this. This you will really feel in the back of your of your thighs. <laughs> My meaning is you could have a, a chair on your bed or, or if you have a large cushion to put on your feet, you can do the same thing. Or an exercise ball, definitely. Or if you go to the gym, if they or at the PT, they have a bench that you can lay down on. Okay, let's see how do it. So the quads exercise yeah. are these two. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the right. mid-range quads are the straight and oh, the they are the two And if you, if you bend your knees, if you put your, yeah, like this, you would feel even more on the back of your. You know, the little children we get to doing 30 with one and a half hands on yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is. I don't know if I'll be able to do it on this service. I may need help, but this is how I get up off the floor. Yeah. It's just impressive getting on the floor. I do it much faster. <laughs> yeah, this can be slippery. The floor needs to have some grip surface, yeah. usually with a thud. Oh, yeah. oh, that's awesome. That's great. Yeah, so, wow. so, but what... Um, that's the yoga. Yeah. So right, that's, keeping you flexible. Uh, yeah, I, can, I can't do the quotes feet, but I, my left leg is actually a little stronger, but yeah. it, and it has to be a little bit of grip. 
it's on the floors are so slippery, then you have to kind of find a wall to put that foot against. But um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed I can still do that, you know. But, um, and I can't even, you know, I can't even lift this hand. So, um, you know, I do believe there are some functions. If you try hard enough, you can still try to do that function. So, again, it's like then it does require little shoulder strength. So, you know, I, this in yoga you try to plan, and then you push back this slippery on the floor. But um, so that is uh, that is an excellent the, core <laughs> exercise. <laughs> yeah. That's a great exercise. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get out of here. That's all right. <laughs> you gotta laugh. <laughs> so, time is running up for us. Do you have any more questions or comments? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. That's really terrific. So, good luck with the exercise. Salt Lake City, Utah. I have IBM and I am here to meet other people that have myositis and learn from the experts. I appreciate the TMA and everything they do for us. Hi, I'm Michael Belsky. Um, I'm a caregiver for my wife who has dermatomyositis and uh, we came here to learn more about myositis. Um, we're fortunate that we live near Stanford and we're getting really, really good care. Uh, but prior to that, it's been a struggle to uh, diagnose the issues and to find out the proper treatment strategies. And being at this conference is like, uh, makes us knowledgeable and more informed of how to approach the problem. Yeah, this is my first conference. This has been excellent. I would recommend this conference to anybody who uh, wants to learn more about it or has just recently been diagnosed or or anything uh, related to that because it, every, it's everybody here is sharing their information and their experiences on myositis and that is so informative and we also are learning a lot about the current research and how to be involved with trials and things like that.